In the meantime, I want to go now to Ben Sass, who had his moment to question Michael Horwitz and Christopher Ray during their testimony on the IG report today. Let's roll that. And Ms. Samuelson was also in her front office. And why do they show up in your report? Um, well, for several reasons. Um, on the one hand, uh, after they left the State Department and Secretary Clinton left the State Department, they culled through Secretary Clinton's emails to decide which ones they concluded were work-related and which ones weren't. And the ones they concluded were work-related were ultimately forwarded to the State Department. So they were involved in that process. In addition, they appear, as so we described here, So the swamp investigating the swamp. ...on July 2nd, Lord. representing her as her lawyer. So they have professional relationships in the government, professional relationships outside the government, compensated as lawyers, Correct. personal relationships and political relationships, and they're allowed to accompany Secretary Clinton to her interview. How can that be? Um, yeah. Well, we describe uh, in here exactly. what the rationale that was that was given to us as we lay out here. We think it was inconsistent with normal investigative procedure, and we're concerned about it. Were they ultimately involved in expunging well, evidence and information it, yeah. that was criminal? Um, they were ultimately involved in um, instructing individuals to remove, destroy the what they had concluded were non-work-related emails. I'll leave it to others to decide what that meant as a legal matter. So no, that's your job. were they target of investigation well, themselves? I mean, you'll leave that to others. From this our is an here, abomination. What we were told was that the only individual considered for potential charging, a potential charging decision was Secretary Clinton. As we noted here, actually nobody was listed as a subject of this investigation at any point in time. Can you think of any other investigation that has no subject of the investigation? Um, I think you probably could have a circumstance. I'd leave it to Director Ray, although in this case where it was a focus, there was a focus of some idea of who was the individual or individuals that were involved in the This is incredible. Pause it right here. Or if you can't pause it, that's fine. Just let it roll. That's okay. Just let it roll if we got to let it roll. They're now, this is unbelievable. They're now sticking up for Hillary Clinton and they're saying, well, you know, maybe she didn't know about this. Maybe it was someone... I, I, I seriously can't believe what this is. This is like the swamp investigating the swamp. That's what this is. The swamp investigating the swamp, and then the swamp telling you the swamp found nothing when they investigated the swamp. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying, I'm trying to maintain my cool here, folks, but, but do, you, do you realize we don't even have a country anymore with these people? Why, why have an FBI and a DOJ? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Shut them down. What is the point? What is the point of these prestigious, these prestigious American institutions of justice and fairness and equality? If there is no justice, there is no fairness, and there is no equality. I just don't, I mean, just go back to it, just go back. Refer to the director. Director Ray, can you give me an example of any investigation like this uh, where people who are potentially involved in the destruction of criminal evidence would be allowed to accompany a supposed subject of an investigation but not named target subject of an investigation? Any example anywhere like that? Uh, it's hard for me to come up with one. It's my experience, um, subjects don't usually accompany each other to interviews. So then why is it going asked, on? Uh, Director Comey why aren't you doing anything about it? Spring, summer of 2016 on the Homeland Security Committee, uh, and he said that when you're trying to get information out of a witness who maybe, or a, a subject, I don't remember the term, the noun he actually used, but when you're trying to get information and you're trying to compel them and it may take a long time if you have to subpoena them, uh, you would do things like this. Can you think of any examples like that? Well, again, I've already uh, testified to my experience. I'm reluctant ever to speak in terms of something never, ever happening, uh, because in my experience, there are very few absolutes in this world. Uh, but certainly the norm would be what I described. It's truly bizarre. Wait, you mean like the uh, FBI agents that said Trump would never be president? About president Obama's comments on the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails uh, in the spring and summer of 2016? Yeah, there were several occasions when either President Obama or his press secretary made comments 
about the Clinton uh, email investigation, and as we describe here, that raised concerns by the, oh, did it? the investigative team and the attorney seemed general. seemed like a lot of things raised and, concerns, and but not enough concern for uh, you to do anything. As we also describe here, it's one of the reasons cited to us by Director Comey uh, for his belief that he had to, in essence, go it alone and make the announcement he had to make on, that he made on July 5. I think many of us on both sides of the aisle are concerned about the erosion of norms, about Article II officials uh, commenting on ongoing investigations. Um, I think it's a terrible thing in 2017 and 2018. I think it was a terrible thing in 2016. Um, can you tell us a little bit inside the culture of the Department of Justice? Was there a sense that the President of the United States commenting on an ongoing investigation was a problem? Did the Attorney General's office know that this was a problem? Um, it was a concern. We describe in here in detail. Oh, what oh, the it was a concern. Was Boy, a lot of concern. concern. You seem to have a lot of concern. The Where's Attorney the General action? And the Justice Department reached out to the White House to find out how did this occur, why did it occur, and that it couldn't continue to oh, occur. Oh, and reaching out to the White House. Yeah, the yes, swamp, investigating the swamp. Again, and oh, so hey, Obama, General what's going Lynch on? Who then would seemingly be a person who wants to guard the integrity of these norms, and yet she's meeting with the former president of the United States, the husband of someone being investigated, even if not named as a subject, and once she had crossed this line of having sat on the tarmac with President Clinton, what steps did she then take? So at that point, she um, went to the department uh, ethics officer for a ethics opinion whether it required her to recuse, which, as you know, is one step, but there is two parts. There is the mandatory recusal, and the laws are very, uh, I'll call narrow as to that. Um, there's also mm -hmm. the permissive mm -hmm. recusal provisions. And yeah, whatever we can do to protect Hillary. An opinion as to... Whatever we can do to protect um, Hillary. I get it. Whether I she was it. required to recuse. Got to protect um, the Clintons at all costs. She would not recuse um, on the permissive basis. Um, and then publicly announced on July 1st what her role would All be right, going you know what? forward. Pull it, down. And as we Pull it down. This is what it comes down to, folks. I'm going to go ahead and put it out right now. Is there anyone out there? Is there anyone out there that is a member of the United States government, whether it be the judicial branch, the executive branch, or the legislative branch? Is there anyone out there within the FBI or the CIA or the DOJ? Is there anyone out there? In, in, in a police outfit, whether it be state police or local police, is there anyone out there, is there anyone out there that has the power to actually bring the Clintons down? Is there anyone out there that isn't a total coward when it comes to the Clintons? Is there anyone out there in the FBI or the DOJ or in any of these Senate and House committees that's willing to put their neck out there to get Hillary Clinton in jail? Or are you all that scared? Are you all that scared that you'll end up in Davy Jones' locker? Are you all that scared you'll end up like Seth Rich? Are you all that scared you'll end up like John Ash? Are you all that scared of the Clintons? Is that what this is? Is that what's really going on here?